Unity Catalog in Azure Databricks is a unified governance solution that provides data discovery, centralized metadata management, and secure data access across the entire Databricks platform. It also simplifies data governance by offering fine-grained access controls and auditability for data and AI assets. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create Databricks cluster, Unity Catalog, Schema, and create tables and use the Power BI desktop to connect with the tables for downstream analysis. Therefore, let's get started. If you're new to my channel, please make sure you click on the subscribe button and turn on the bell icon to be notified of new videos. Let's dive into it. I am currently in the Microsoft Azure Databricks platform. So the first thing I'm going to do is to create a cluster. So I'm going to come to compute and of course to create a cluster, just click on this create. Now we can choose either we want all purpose compute or job specific compute or SQL warehouses, serverless compute and so on. But we're going to go with the all purpose compute, click on this create compute. And then we can provide the name for the compute and then we can provide a policy including the nodes like the multiple or single node and then we can provide the databricks runtime version and then we can specify the termination period i'm going to just choose single node and then this is fine we're going to stick with the use pontoon acceleration and then we can terminate this cluster pending on whatever time we choose by default, we're going to have this 120 minutes. So I can just move this to maybe um, 60 uh, minutes, and this is really necessary in order not to incur cost if this cluster is not being used. So once you're done, go ahead and click on Create Compute, and then we're going to wait for that to be created. But in our demo, I'm going to use this already created Abiola, Abiola cluster, okay? So we must have this cluster running. Next, we're going to go ahead and create our catalog. To do that, I'm going to come to the catalog here, and then, by default, we're going to have this Ive Metastore Samples and System Catalog. Now, I can go ahead and click on Create Catalog. Click on this plus, and then I can go ahead and click on Add a Catalog. So, I'm going to provide the name for the catalog. Let me just call this one Data Analysis. And then we can provide the type. It's going to be a simple standard, and then we can provide the storage location. This is going to be within my Databricks demo, which is what I have here. So click on that, and then I can see the ABFSS path. So go ahead and click on Create, and then we have the catalog created. Beautiful. So we can go ahead and provide the configuration. So click on this Configure Catalog. And then we're going to see these three steps, workspaces that's going to use this catalog and the permissions and then the metadata. So this is going to be used across in this entire workspaces. So this is fine. I can click on next. And then for the permission, I don't need to do anything special. I've got the name of the owner, click on next. And then for the metadata, click on save. And then we have the catalog successfully established, which is super cool. And I'm going to see that here at the top. So this is the catalog. Now, within the catalog, we need to go ahead and create our schema. By default, we're going to have these two schemas, the default, and then we have the other one, which is the information schema. Now, in the information schema, we're going to see things like the catalog privileges, catalog tags, catalogs, check constraints, and so many other um, information. And when you come to the details, you're going to see the information about the information schema, and then the catalog name, and then the owner, meta store ID, created at, and so on and so forth. That's fine. I'm going to go back here. So we want to create our own user specific schema. So to do that, click on this create schema at the top right hand corner. And I can provide the name for the schema. I'm going to call this one analysis. And once I'm done, I can, of course, provide the storage location. This is going to be inside the Databricks underscore demo and then click on create. So we have the analysis schema created. So let me just go back and refresh. And when I expand this data analysis catalog, I'm going to see, let me close this a little bit. Okay, close this. I'm going to go ahead and create table within the analysis schema so i'm going to click on this create and then i can create volume or table so we'll actually create a table so click on that and then i'm going to see this create or modify table from file uploaded and then i can browse through the file for my local machine click on this browse and i've got this saved 2015 to 2023 so i want to actually import all of them as a single table so a single click on this and then hold down the shift key and then click on the sales 2023 and then click on open and it's going to automatically append all the nine files so we're going to see nine files uploaded with 
the total of 18.66 kilobytes. And then we can see the column, the year, the region, the subcategory, and so on and so forth. And then we're going to see, this is going to be stored in the data analysis catalog, and then this is going to be stored within the catalog, the analysis schema, and then this is going to be the name of the table. I'm going to call this one all sales data. I can go ahead and create at the bottom the table. Now, before I do that, I can click on this advanced attribute and then we can see things such as the automatic detect file type. This is going to be a comma separated value, which is detected automatically. And then we have the column delimiter and then we have the escape character and then we have the first row contains the header and then the automatic detect column types and then we have this match the schema across the nine files which is absolutely brilliant so i can cancel this one out. i can go ahead and click on create table and then your table all sales data is being created so we're going to wait and there we go so for now we can say no data all you need to do is just go ahead and click on this refresh catalog and you're going to see the all sales data table within the analysis schema of the data analysis catalog. Super amazing. And then in the overview, we can see the names of the columns, the year, the region, to the sales. And then we can see the type, the big A, string, and so on. And then we can even input some comments, tags, and color masking, which is actually cool. When I come to the sample data, I can see the sample data set, which is super cool. I'm just move this a little bit. And then we have all data set combined as a single table. So this is 2023. When I scroll down, I'm going to see 2022 and so on and so forth. Super cool. When I come to the details, I'm going to see this is a managed table. And then we have the historic location. And then we have the Azure blob file system. And then we can see the property they created and by and so on this is now created so we want to go ahead and use this data set the all sales data to perform analysis in the power bi desktop so to do that i'm going to come to the power bi desktop and then this is just a power bi instance i'm going to click on get data and then click on the more option at the bottom and i'm going to search for azure data breaks and I'm going to see the Azure data breaks basically we need to provide the server host name and then the hypertext transfer protocol path so for the server host i'm going to come back to the data breaks and i'm going to go right into my compute and i'm going to go into that specific catalog that's actually running so click on that and then i'm going to scroll down at the bottom we have the advanced options click on that and then we're going to see the spark logins innate script and then we have the java database connectivity and the open database connectivity so i'm going to click on this and i'm going to see the server host name so this is the Azure database, Databricks. I'm going to copy this and then go back to the Power BI desktop and then Ctrl V to paste. And then for the HTTP path, I'm going to go back and basically we have the path. So copy this HTTP path. So copy the whole thing. And then I go to the Power BI desktop, Ctrl V to paste. Before I click OK, I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to have this data connectivity mode. By default, this is going to be the import mode. So we can even use the direct query similar to the SQL Server. We can query data from the source without physically ingesting into the Power BI engine. So I'm going to go with the import because it's just a small file. Click on OK. And then the park is going to establish connection to my cluster and then i'm going to see the catalogs so we have the data analysis the i've metastore and then the sample exactly what we have in the catalogs we have the data analysis i've metastore and then the samples with the super code now i'm going to click on this data analysis catalog and this my error so of course you can see this open database connectivity error now this is actually strange but this is how to solve the problem click on this refresh so when you click on this refresh it's going to actually solve the problem i'm going to go back and i'm going to see the analysis and then the default so i'm going to click on this analysis schema and i'm going to see the all sales table so click on that and i can see the preview of the data which is amazing Okay, so we have data set. So let's go ahead and create or transfer the data. So we want to create the dimension tables from the all sales data fact table. So our data is now in the Power Query Editor, which is absolutely amazing. Now I'm going to right click. Let me just right click and then create a duplicate of this query. I'm going to right click and rename this as Dim Products and press Enter. So I'm going to come to the product column, right click, remove 
other columns and then we can get rid of the duplicates from the product column and then we'll go ahead to the add column tab and then insert an index column from one so this is going to be the product id and then press enter so i'm going to go back to the all sales right click i'm going to create a duplicate i'm going to call this one um dim year and press enter i'm going to right click on the year column remove all the columns and then i can right click and then remove duplicate come to the add column tab click on index column from one and this is going to be the year id I'm going to go back to the all sales let's just maybe do one more for the region i'm going to right click and then create the duplicate so right click rename i'm going to call this one the region for the dimension table right click on the column remove other columns right click and then remove duplicates and then we want to insert the index and it's going to be region ID press enter. I think this is fine. So I'm just rename this properly. Okay, and then I can come to the home tab and then close and apply. And then this is going to be applied into the Power BI data model. And then we're going to have the automatic one to many relationship created. And then we can go ahead and perform some analysis. Okay, so our data has been fully ingested into the Power BI desktop. I'm going to see we have the four tables. And then when I come to the model or the relationship view, I'm going to see the one to many relationships. So there we go. So cool. I'm going to come back to the report view. Let's just create a simple measure. Let's just create total sales. And I'm going to call this on total sales equals. And let's just use the sum function. And I want to take the sales column from the old sales data table, close the brackets, and then press enter. And let's apply the currency formatting to make it nice. The English United Kingdom GB pound. And then I can drag this to my report canvas. And then I will actually slice this by the year. So there we go. And then I want to turn this to a table visual. And let's just come to the view and then come to the themes. Let's go ahead and customize the theme. And for the text, we want to come to the general. Let's just track this to maybe 25 and then click and apply. Okay, there we go. So we can see we have all the data. So I'm going to actually sort this. Let's sort from the 2015. So you have the 2015 to 2023, and then you have the total sales. So this is basically how we can use the Power BI desktop to connect to the unit catalog data from the Azure Databricks. I trust you this video. If you do, like, share with your friends, comment, and follow me for more videos because the best is yet to come. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.